sure everyone's been asking you lately, but you have your new project, Enter. Uh -huh. uh, what's the what direction are you going for in Enter? Actually, not so, you know, not many people have asked me about it yet because it's so brand new. Really? Um, yes, I got the first one. So you, so you <laughs> the first, yeah, you definitely have the first one. Um, I know, you know, it's a, it's a big project for us because it's the first time I'm doing a, a residency on Ibiza. And basically, if you've been to Ibiza, it's full of, of course, like amazing green parties. You've got all the top DJs in the world. But, you know, whatever club, to, club it's at, you know, the, the, the party, it's music here, music there, music there. You know, it's all music, which is, of course, the center of everything. But, you know, I think there's room to play a little bit with people. And um, so our idea is, you know, one, to deliver really great underground music and um, some DJs and artists that people haven't heard before, and then also offer some kind of playgrounds with technology uh, and interactivity that give people a place to kind of hang and trip out, maybe hear some more ambient type of electronic music and just open it up a little bit. You know, because Ibiza is really like, it's all about the dance floor. And uh, we'll have two rooms of them, which are about the dance floor. But yeah, we just want to give people different experiences. Yeah. You know, we also have a, a small... Well, well around there, right? Yeah, well, well, people go to Ibiza to fucking have some kind of epiphany or crazy fucking experience. Now you're going to give it to them. And we want to give it in different ways. We also have a small bar in the back of the club, which we're turning into a sake bar, to introduce people to that kind of... Um, idea of, of this drink from Japan, you know, which I think goes really well with the music we play. And you mentioned that it's uh, going to be heavily influenced by your, uh, by Japanese influence, Yeah, right? yeah, but, well, uh, Japanese influence for me is, uh, uh, it's been really important in my life and in my music, uh, the balance they have graphically and, 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 in, and in, their, um, in their way of living and their love of technology, so it, it, I don't know, it's, it may not make sense for everybody, but it makes sense to me, so we're going to present it this way, and hopefully people will come into our, will enter our little yeah. world, and, and, and find Literally. something, yeah, find something new. That's awesome. So are you going to put plastic pants to rest for now? For now, yeah, I, the idea already was to bring plastic band back next year, mm -hmm. and so this year is enter, and giving me some time to decide which way plastic band will go, I'm recording some new music, and... You know. That's good to give it a breather and yeah. give you inspiration. Yeah, I get really tired doing the same old thing. So that's why the last two years we had Plastic Man. Before that, I had a project called Contact. Now we have Enter. So I thought it was just coming to festivals and playing music for two or three hours every time. It's okay, of course, it's inspiring. I love playing music, but I need something to bite my teeth into. Yeah, you know? to change it around. Yeah. I appreciate that because I'm an artist, visual artist, but um, you always need new sources of inspiration. For sure, for sure. If not, you're going to just dry and shrivel up. Yeah, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again, no. right? I know that they were big supporters for you when mm. you were making your career. How big of a role do they play now? Yeah, well, my mom and dad are, and, and bro brother are, are kind of very intertwined to, to everything I do. Uh, my brother is very uh, inspiring to me. He's a visual artist, painter, and uh, my mom and dad still help with the company, with Minus. Really? Um, and um, my dad's helping me with weird electronic projects if I have an idea or one, one of my pieces of equipment changed, I talked to my dad first, so it's really, um, to me, it's that's just how family is, right? Yeah, so it's cool. that's awesome, yeah. that's great, that's, yeah. it still carries on. Yeah, like we're, we're there, I meet them next week in, in Italy, we're going around doing some oh, wine tours. Oh, they actually wine. fly out, so yeah. like, wow. Yeah, We're doing some wine tours and then we go over to Sonar, because my dad uh, comes every year because he likes to go and see some, you know, he's more into electronic ambient stuff, not so much yeah. dance music, but he's totally, uh, if you go to his house, it's like craft work and, yeah. and uh, compact records and shit all over the place. <laughs> That's, cool. That's really cool. When did, uh, recently, I know Seth Troxler wasn't on your team really before, how did he get involved? 
Well, Seth is from Detroit, so Seth is, if you talk to, you know, he, he can probably tell you better stories than I can, but, you know, when he was, I think, 14 or 15, he started coming to his first electronic music parties. Snap parties? And uh, they were some of our yeah. parties. So he kind of grew up listening to me, and, um, and, and so there's been a conversation back and forth, and um, I think I've inspired him, and, and he's re-inspired me back with his renewed energy and how his career is going right now. So that's a that's an amazing thing. Yeah, it's, you know? it's funny how they grow up and they yeah, come Seth, back to yeah, yeah, totally. Seth is really like he was like a, a you know another one of those kids in the you know a face in the crowd that you had no idea where they were gonna go, mm -hmm. um, and you hoped for the best. You played your music. You try to give out a positive idea of music or a vibe or of, of uh, what what you know what you're about and uh, hopefully some of that went into him and um, you know helped him get to this point. Yeah. So now that you've been playing these shows uh, with Enter and Blossom Man, do you ever think about going back to like the old rave underground scene like where it's just a warehouse and you? Yeah you know like I, I think there's a common misconception about DJs as they get more popular that they only want to play big festivals or they only want to chase money or things like that and they don't want to do underground parties. The problem with underground parties, you know, is that the more underground they are, usually the better they are, but the more, um, what's the word, it, it, it's, you know, you just don't know if it's going to actually happen. Yeah. You know, so flying all the way from Berlin to New York, say, as an example, for a cool underground warehouse party and then getting there, you know, and then finding the cops to shut it down mm -hmm. and stuff like that is really depressing, yeah. you know, and, and disappointing. So, you know, when we find a promoter who knows what they're doing and has, you know, the right kind of situation, whether it's the right permits or the right, you know, angle to make sure it happens, we're totally open for that. Okay. You know, and, and, and we want to do, you know, things like that. You know, like the last uh, two months, most of my gigs have been small clubs for four or five hundred people, because in the in the summer, then I'm playing all these type of things. So, you know, I also want to be able to play for large and big audiences because you play different. You know, yeah. when you're when you're like this with yeah. like three hundred people, you maybe dig a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, and then you you know, we're here at EDC. You've got five thousand people in front of you. And you've got some really hardcore fans there, but in between those, you have maybe people who are coming to see you for the first time, or just some people who stumbled on there. They have no idea who you are, and you're trying to, you know, bring those people together. So perhaps you have, you know, because of that, you play differently. Yeah, I understand that. Right now we have, um, you know, a lot of things going on in the label. One of my one of my long-term friends, Hobo, is really killing it right now. We have an, another new act, uh, Matador. From, oh, I, I love and, this set. Yeah, um, in uh, Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was killing it. So. Yeah. And there's another one on SoundCloud that I found that it's like just so dark and minimal and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Cre creepier the voices. I'm like, yes, yeah. everyone identifies you with uh, electronic music, but what non-electronic music influences do you have since there's always some? Yeah, I guess there is some, but I always, it's hard for me to, to remember. Like I grew up Prince, mm -hmm. you know, I, I loved Prince when I was yeah. a kid. But then, like, I, I very quickly got into all electronic music. Uh, I was not really into indie mm -hmm. or into the whole early 90s explosion of, of Nirvana and all that. It didn't really, like, get to me. Um, right now, my favorite my favorite band is uh, the, uh, the Grimes. Yeah. But they're a little bit electronic, too, so. Yeah, but they're not, like, full out 4-4, four, four, like, no. yeah. So. How do you comment when people say uh, that the techno and minimal is lacking soul? Like a lot of people, I see a lot of yeah, producers, well, even like Duff Ryder, using more like house yeah. or like house like chain. Yeah, but I think you know, like what the first Dub Fire record that I mm -hmm. bought was on one of the first Deep Dish records, and it was a fucking incredible house track. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, you know, like when we first started, house and techno was all mixed together. So that's mm -hmm. this, the way we still hear it. So. You know, 
Um, Even in Detroit? Because yeah, you know how like Chicago well, it tends to take ownership kind of a little yeah, bit? Yeah, well, I think De De Detroit, I think Detroit was very mixed, you know, all the time. Like, it's, you always had great house records, then you'd have great electro records, and then, of course, great techno records being played. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a certain genre to be funky yeah. or to have soul, yeah. you know? Um, it just needs to it just that person who make, makes that piece of music just needs to put themselves themselves into it. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. That's true. It's all in the person. Yeah. Yeah. Skrillex. Yeah. How did how did that come about? Uh, that, that just came about because uh, we were playing in in Manchester mm -hmm. together at two different clubs, and so we had dinner together and we just had a funny conversation, mm -hmm. and um, just thought we would like talk further, you mm -hmm. know, for uh, for Mixmag. Mm -hmm. And I was doing this thing about electronic music and EDM, and you know, it's interesting to talk to, you know, Skrillex being kind of the new kid who. It's kind of come up through a different way of electronic mm -hmm. music than, than than I did 20 years ago, um, and then talking to him, and then talking to people like Derek May or Jeff Mills, and like getting a whole picture, picture yeah. you know, because you know Skrillex is the or is one of the main ways that a lot of North American kids mm -hmm. are getting into electronic music. That's true. And uh, I want to understand that, and I want to know him. And you know, because we're all in this together. Yeah. How did you feel with his answers? Did you feel like your perspective? Uh, it was okay. You know, honestly, like the 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 we we ended up we had a better conversation at dinner than we did on yeah. the telephone later because he was in he was somewhere and the, t the telephone line was really really shit and yeah. uh, <laughs> you know it's like when you do interviews you, you know this like managers get involved this yeah. and that and the more people that get involved then the less authentic. Exactly. Yeah. And when we were at dinner, it was just shooting the shit and it yeah. was really funny. But he's, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I'm not, I don't, uh, I don't like everything that Sonny does, but I really respect what he's trying to do, his direction, and he's a really cool kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's doing, you know, in my, in my mind, he's doing great things for electronic music. That's great. Um, speaking of mix mag, also ask your fans or the general public the question about the uh, is the underground going to be hurt by the overground mm -hmm. why did you feel the need to ask out to the people are you worried about well, yeah, yeah. what people are thinking nowadays yeah well i think you know i've seen the rise of electronic music come up and down especially mm -hmm. in north america three or four or five times and sometimes you know it it uh it gets misunderstood or people take it the wrong way like it was a question to people but also a question for me you know, because yeah. I spent so much time in this music that it's very close to me, yeah. and uh, I don't want um, I don't want it to be taken the wrong way. Yeah, I, you know, I feel you 100% on that. It's all about the emotion. Yeah, and for sure. For me, it's like almost sad to see when people are just going for the cool so fact. Would you say that it's even silly to classify music as underground or mainstream when music is just music? Yeah, I think you know music. When you create a piece of art or music, you know, you put it out into the world and a certain amount of people are going to identify with that. And sometimes you have 500 people who understand what you're doing, 5,000 people, or sometimes 5 million. It doesn't make the music or anything any better or worse. It's just different, you know? And, um, you know, what I do, I, I don't expect or even want to try and make something that touches everybody you know I want to do what I do and I think there's enough people out there who can appreciate what I do to make me feel like I should continue yeah Does it, do you find it funny that now people are saying that you are now the, like the mainstream of the underground I've always in a way been the mainstream of the underground you know because I, I never I don't want to make music that's say popular or, 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 or commercial I want to make what I make but I want to let as many people know about it as possible you know if you make a great record if you're playing a great track 
or you know Seth Trunks or, or, or Monk to make something, you want everybody to fucking hear that bomb. You know, yeah. not everybody's gonna get it. Yeah. Because we do make very specialized music. But I also don't wanna like, you know, like keep it yeah. so away from people. So I've always kind of played with that line Push of being the boundary of, like, of, of yeah. being, you know, open or commercial but underground. So that's I'm I'm happy with that. You know, you stick true to the sound, basically. That's, I think if you look at what I've been doing and playing and producing and with the label over the last 20 years, there's a, continua a continuity there. I've always stick to what I believe in and what I feel. Yeah. And that's, all you, can, that's all you can yeah. do.